is Dave Oakley. I'm a retired hospital architect, and they, they need to volunteer to restore this house, restore and rehabilitate. It's both. I said, okay, and then, but they snuck in. They didn't tell me I had to raise the money, too. <laughs> so anyway, that's been fun. We raised over $130,000 to do what we've seen here, plus some 2,000 hours of volunteers work. That's the way it was. So that's constantly the, the background. And Margo, my wife, I have been volunteering here since '03. It's been a while. Wow, so beautiful. Okay. Well, when the colonists came here, they were told they could make a living raising olives with olive trees. Well, they got here and the water was brackish. They couldn't use it for people or animals. So consequently, a lot of people that came, settled, couldn't stay. They left. But the Tatons did, and they bought this front house, which is the front half of the Taton house, which they bought in 1893. But anyway, the water was so bad, they would take a big tank like out there, hook a horse to it, and take it somewhere with a windmill that had a pump to get down to the water table where it was above the brackish, or below the brackish part. And they would fill the tank and bring it up here and either pump, they had to pump it into a cistern. We have a, a uh, cistern we had built because the kids don't know what a cistern is. Right. And we want to show them something. Yep. So, anyway, that's basically the story on the house. And even, even the, the roses and the iris were samples of things that Gladys and her mother bought wow. when they left this house in uh, 1940. Now, her mother stayed for a while and remarried. I'm not sure the exact which came first, chicken or the egg, but consequently, when Gladys got married, married in 1941, and she left, of course. But she was the last one born and raised in this house. Okay. And the dedication is the plaque up there to her memory. And the street address? 1885. Well, that's a misnomer. It's supposed to say 1893. Okay. But that's, it's close. <laughs> Somebody got it really excited and came up here and did that. And I said, where did you get that date? We don't have that date. But because on the plaque here, you see it's 1893. Purchased in 1893. And Gladys saved all kinds of furniture from the original house. And before she passed away in 2015, she told us the museum let it have the furniture as soon as the house is watertight, as soon as the... House was secure, meaning walkable. Yeah. Walkable. So anyway, she got to come in here and to see it, and she said, Dave, it never looked this good when I lived. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, she talked about the leaky roofs and the pots and pans to catch the water. Roger, her only brother, had to uh, sleep in the attic. And her one of her sisters, the one in the corner, died in a wash tub in the back lawn. And there's her father and mother's wedding picture. There, that's Frederick Tayton and Anna, you know, forebearers of uh, the Tayton situation. Here's the tank they had with everybody riding on it, including John Tayton. Wow. Which is fun. And of course, that's Anna. And the picture over there is uh, Anna and Frederick of their five children. John, which is one of them. So, a lot of the furniture is from the house. Other parts of the furniture are just of the period but they weren't original. So you find that, for example, the pot that it sold is from the period, but is not original. That was stony. The ceilings are all original. The basic structure of the house, the studs, roof rafters, everything in here is original. The ceilings are original, though. That we just painted. The vandals got on the front porch, set it on fire, and the whole porch in front of the building looked like this. When was that? Um, I'm not sure, because I... Around 07, I believe. Wow. So, and I say that sort of because, as what Gladys said, it didn't look this good when she lived here. Well, people see it now and they think, well, it doesn't look too bad to us. Well, it, a lot of it, look, this whole front wall here looks wow. like that. Anyway, I say some people think I'm nuts. But no, that's a great uh, reminder of the restoration process. Sure, it was just part and parcel. The house had been vandalized terribly, consequently. There was a lot to do. Most everything in here is original that Gladys saved. The armoire, the dresser, the bed. This, however, is her mother's wedding dress that Laura Tayton, that wedding picture over there is John and Laura. 
and there's our license in 1917. We have the original, but it's we don't keep it out here, of course. It's in fireproof. Sure. The watercolors are all drawn, drawn. Watercolors are all original. They were done by, by um, Laura. And so we say, and well, Blas saved everything. Just amazing the things she said. This is uh, of the period, but not from the house. When the house was abandoned, and a lot of things are original, so was the bird's nest. <laughs> we kept it because the kids get a kick out of it. Yeah. The house was moved four times, and this corner was dropped. That's why the big crack. And you'll see cracks around, which we left on purpose. Bedroom number two, where Gladys and her sister slept together in a double bed. Nothing in this room was original except the potty chair. And the seatings again, and so forth. And we're, we're developing this in kind of a photo room where we'll blow up pictures and make it. This is the service porch where the, the Tatons um, ran their turkey business, their egg business, their farming business, everything they could grow and sell or barter. They ran all of this. It wasn't enclosed until we got it, but we had to keep it the way it was. Anyway, the eggs here, just to give you an idea, here's an original barter. It took 15 dozen eggs, like that, to get $3.90 of barter at the general store. And these are samples she saved. She saved all kinds of stuff. That's so great. And the German family, they grew lots of cabbage. It's basically a dry crop, so they would shred it for their... Anyway, that's the original outhouse. It's a two-holer. There's a picture of Gladys taking a bath in 1927. She was a year old. That's the kind of a picture that we're blowing up from things like this. So it's easier for people to see. Right. And this is an evolutionary room like the whole house is in general. It really went from wash tubs and scrub boards to this 1930, wrong, 1900 electric washing machine. And then a 1912 washing machine. And here's the wash stand where everybody washed to eat meals. The girls washed their head hair here. All the workmen came in from the, uh, the farm workers before they could eat. The wood stove where they take the pails of water to build a wood farm and heat their water. Consequently, these are pictures of the moving and the way the house was broken in two. All of it, you see, on the freeway, where it was on the freeway. Obviously, we don't have the four burner wood stove. But no one's donated one yet, which would be nice. So that's why it went from that wood stove, which we don't have, to the range in the 1932 refrigerator. Therefore, there's 32, there's acoustical tile on the ceiling. We didn't tear it off, it was just, we didn't have the time anyway. So we kept, kept it, we painted it. And so that's the way we tried to evolve it. There were no carpets ever used, no rugs. Well, I didn't have the, the, dirt, the cattle droppings and the chicken droppings and dirty workmen and stuff. They, they just mopped the floor. So they bought linoleum carpets from Sears and Roebuck. Wow. Okay. This room, everything in this room is original except. The record player, it's of the period, 1912, and the telephone. They didn't have a telephone in the period we're talking about. We think they did before 1940, but we're not sure. Gladys couldn't remember. But the table's original, the china's original, the silver's, the, wa the original watercolors and oil, everything are all original. We had them restored. Um, that's the meeting room at the Levenheim. I don't know what that's called up there, but it's a privately owned park that's used by a, by a separate board. The city does not own it, but this, this house was about a half a mile away at the most. This was dedicated by the city under the proclamation, dedicating a historical home for Encinitas. And that's her obituary, and that's Gladys. Wonderful the lady. May of 15. She died in October of 15. We were so lucky to know her all this time, situation. Behind you are is Gladys and her two sisters, surviving sisters, and one brother. This was the original pump organ that Gladys could play and had in her house at one time. But after she left in 1940, 41, when she got married, it disappeared. Anyway, they found it, the family found it, and we brought it here. It doesn't belong out here, 
this was bedroom number three when Gladys couldn't sleep with her sister anymore. This became, but it was a different configuration. Sure. That's why I call the house an evolution as the years went on. Right. House situation. So the original kerosene chandelier, she saved. That was a, it's wired for electricity now, but of course it was. So that's just about the story. The chipping on the wall, is the, it was the outside of, rear of the Tayton house, and we think they, someone had wanted to plaster it. And that's why the chipping oh, yeah. to re, re, create a plaster sure. key, a key. So we just left it. A lot of things we left to try to not look make it look so new and modern. Absolutely. Or I don't know about modern, but up to date anyway. So and that's about all the Griffith. Oh, here, Gladys, when her father took her to San Diego, first time she ever saw the streetcars, she came up here and this is what she drew on the wall. This is the graffiti we kept Come in on, her man. memory. That's we beautiful. thought it was so nice that, uh, yeah. so basically that's the story as I know it. And we're still working on it. We're still researching, trying to find more information, verify it, because they didn't get uh, electricity until 1947. Well, I want to thank you all, you especially, to come and take our tour. Glad you could come. We have uh, open house between our tours only on Saturday, 1.30 to 3.30. And I'm Dave Oakley. I'm a retired hospital architect. I took the run the committee to restore it. A lot of help. I got a lot of help, too, besides the money we spent. The but we got a lot of volunteers and a lot of people have helped over the last four and a half years. It's been really nice. Wonderful. That's great. Couldn't have done it without them. All right, folks, come on down to the San Diego Heritage Museum. The Tayton House is open on Saturdays.